This is like my favorite one because this changed our company. Um, you know, a lot of times, and this is the, the sort of the, the trend and the culture that we're living in with the internet and, and just where we are right now. You can go on any social media platform and find professional dog trainers or people saying that these dogs that are having behavior issues or whatever are being a jerk or the dog's just being a brat or my dog is this. And this talks about the attitude of the dog towards the training, but also of the, the handler, the owner, or the, the trainer towards the dog. Make sense? So if you have this concept of my dog is just stubborn, or my dog is, you know, and the terms get worse as you go. A jerk is putting it lightly for some of the things that you see on, on mass post on Facebook and YouTube. So we don't talk about dogs in, in a bad way here. And we used to, I'll be honest with you. You know, it's, we used to say, oh, this dog coming in, he, you know, he's a real something, right? A real pain in the ass. We, when I started like really like paying attention to this concept and this, this stage of the pyramid, I realized how important it was that this had to start with me. Like, okay, we're going to stop doing that. We're not going to say those things because here's what happens. If you say that about the dog, oh, my dog's being a jerk, how are you going to start your training program? You're going to start it off on the wrong foot. And they're going to know it immediately, and you're going to really make it a much more difficult process for both you and the dog. Okay, so we're going to practice having a good attitude towards the training. I really like this. I really like this stuff. And the industry, it, it's like everything else. There's self-correction going on. Now you start seeing people's terminology change, right, and what, how they're labeling dogs. So we label them accurately. And if a dog's barking too much, then we understand that that dog needs an outlet and some clarity on when it's supposed to be barking. This is a good time to point out that, remember when I told you positive reinforcement only was frustrating? That was the frustrating part. You could spend months training the dog, and you do okay, but then when you get out into the real world, and something comes along that's more enticing than you guys, and that is bound to happen, there's nothing that, the dog, that tells the dog, okay, I should remain at my handler's side. That's not the natural response. So instead of letting that us, like, catch us off guard, or like, oh, we're going to be proactive and be knowing that at some point we're going, you know, we're going to have to teach the dog, you can't go do what you want to do right now. You have to stay back here. When you acknowledge that and realize that it's a necessary part of your training program. You get to implement that stuff right at the beginning, right, right, right away. When we start handling the dogs, I'm going to be like a hawk watching your leash handling, okay? Because when I bring a dog out here and it's going, oh, hey, this is great. I am, that's my opportunity to teach the dog, you can't go do that right now. You got to come back to my side. You see what I'm saying? It's not just when you, waiting until you're in the vet or you're, you're, you're doing something out and about and say, okay, now's a good time to practice teaching the dog what to do. That is not a good approach. Okay, it's just, you, you need to get your muscle strength and you need to have your habits down and the dog needs to learn that it's almost not worth trying to go say hi to everybody. It just doesn't work out for them. Attitude produces behavior. Very good. And my wife added, think, feel, do. Uh, from a therapy perspective, how we think in turn drives how we feel, and that's what's going to drive our actions. So there's your free therapeutic advice for the day.